Developing a series for a yearly release must be a tricky business. In the space of just a few months, you need to make everything look nicer and produce meaningful gameplay strides. With PES 2018, Konami's annual soccer game looks and sounds a little too similar to last year's edition, but some excellent on-pitch tweaks are enough to make it the most satisfying football game ever made. The most noticeable change is a reduction in the game's speed. Matches play out at a slower, more methodical and more realistic pace. Crucially, however, everything feels just as responsive as before. Combined with a number of new animations, the slower pace lends each kick a greater sense of weight. It also means when you lose the ball, it usually takes longer to get it back, which can frustrate, especially when defending has not improved meaningfully in a couple of years now. Despite Pez shifting down a gear, its mechanics still allow you to pull off some spectacular manoeuvres. Passes feel more satisfying than ever, and they're aided by better positioning of wide men, meaning more opportunities to pick out players with pinpoint crossfield balls. Ground passes are executed with greater variety, meanwhile. Your players will contextually change from spraying the ball with the outside of the boot to curling with the inside to punting on the toe at will. Passing's versatility lets you produce some beautiful football. Play with Barcelona and you can actually play like Barcelona. But it also means you can lump it to the big man up top, or play it wide and get crosses in if a particular situation demands it. This is especially helpful from set pieces, which have been reworked to allow you to pick different tactics depending on the situation. You can now choose to send your centre-backs forward for long free kicks for example, and you can pick where you want your players to run to from corners. Direct free kicks have been improved too, and they now feel less stiff and more intuitive. However, Pez has a major problem, its lack of licences. Of the world's major leagues, only the French and Italian leagues are licensed in Pez, with the Premier League, EFL and the Spanish leagues only included in make-believe form. As is traditional with Pro Evo, teams are replicated with fake kits and pretend team names like Man Blue for Manchester City, London FC for Chelsea and MD White for Real Madrid, while the German league is not present in any form. Even the fake kits are often wildly different to the real-life versions they're meant to be imitating. Thankfully, it's relatively easy to mod in authentic kits on PS4 and PC, though Xbox One users are stuck with the likes of West Glamorgan City and Merseyside Blue for good. The lack of attention paid to how kits look is reflected in the game's presentation as a whole. While Pez's main rival, FIFA, replicates the experience of watching soccer on TV pretty closely, Pro Evo 2018 looks a bit flat by comparison. Crowds appear like cardboard cutouts and sound almost as fake as they look. Peter Drury and Jim Beglin's awful, stilted commentary also returns, with a cliche-ridden library that contains few new lines and zero extra excitement. These complaints aren't new to Pez 2018, but as FIFA's presentation continues to improve, Pez's poor sights and sounds are put in starker contrast with every passing year. And our live game is Fiorentina against Inter. This is Peter Drury, and I'm happy to inform you that Jim Beglin has joined me to offer his expertise. Hello, Peter, and hello to everyone watching. For me, it's a, it's a real thrill to be here. The same is true of Pez's online offering. Konami's answer to FIFA Ultimate Team, my club, this year adds 3v3 online co-op play, a mode in which you sacrifice most of the control in return for some laughs with your friends. However, Pez was frequently unable to connect enough human players, meaning I often ended up controlling one third of an otherwise AI-controlled team. It's not quite the fun addition it should be, especially when I was occasionally subject to some horrible input lag when playing online. The offline single-player Master League makes strides in some areas while remaining infuriating in others. The new menu layer is a welcome change that makes the mode easier to navigate, but there's still a number of glaring oddities that need to be addressed. Youth teams are still littered with unknown players whose names were seemingly assembled by a monkey on a typewriter, for example, and transfer budgets are still criminally low. While PSG were out spending £150 million on Mbappe and £200 million on Neymar in real life this summer, I was restricted to just £50 million in total with them in PES 2018. Thankfully, a couple of neat touches like customizable training regimes and release clauses in players' contracts do add some depth, and the new challenge mode keeps things interesting with unexpected scenarios like players wanting to leave. Overall, PES 2018 is the proverbial game of two halves. Off the field, it's sorely lacking. Online modes and server issues leave much to be desired, and the game's presentation as a whole is lagging behind the competition, even if the PES community produces some sterling work in recreating the unlicensed kits every year. But when you get onto the pitch, no other football game feels as good as PES 2018. The slower pace is a definite improvement, helping tread the line between realism and fun near perfectly. There's just something about how the players and the ball move that's just so pleasant to control. Every pass, header and shot just feels right. And when it clicks, and you score a thunderous strike from the edge of the area, or finish off a slick passing move, or even when you launch an ugly long ball forward to grab a last minute winner, it's the closest feeling you'll get to being out there scoring yourself. He's buried it, and he's won it!
it. Barcelona taken all the way. They found the way from the spot and they have won it. A win in the most thrilling fashion.